more analysis now from Pier Luigi Paganini. He is the Chief Technology Officer at uh, Sybase and he's also a member of the European Union Agency for Cyber Security. And he jo joins us now from Rome. Great to have you on the program. How really, you know, worried should we be? Because WhatsApp is owned for, by Facebook. The CEO recently said its platforms cannot work as arbiters of the truth. So how confident can we be, Pierluigi, that they'll, uh, they will give us the real change that uh, the EU wants to see? Yes, generally speaking, I believe that from a technical point of view, there is a lot of effort to do. Uh, Companies have the technical capabilities, but they need to implement a new model of defense. Facebook and WhatsApp have all the data necessary to track misinformation campaign, but this is an overhead that has a cost, and every company, first of all, has to attempt to minimize the cost. Flagging the, the tweets, is, uh, for example, is an option, like using the number of four words for each message, but we need more. We need a system that will analyze the way the news spread and identify the sources to block them. Uh, social media platform monitor any abuse, uh, but they cannot simply add the labels to a comment or to public view, for example. Uh, this platform could represent an even greater danger than today. Uh, anyway, it is essential for tech giants uh, to provide evidence uh, of their efforts in fighting the misinformation online. For the coming uh, Digital Services Act and the UAE uh, Democracy Action Plan will force them to share data in a systematic way. This could help the UA authorities to coordinate the efforts in fighting misinformation campaign. Okay, but just to be clear, do you, do you really think the CEO of Facebook will, will push for that transparency? Because just last week, um, he had said we're not the arbiters of truth when it came to, 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 to many things, to messages. Uh, well, Facebook and other social networks could be uh, could not be arbiters of truth. They users should continue to spread the news and express their opinion on any subjects. But companies must monitor and block any attempt at using their services to carry out misinformation. In many cases, uh, trick actors have paid in the past to reach targeted audience, and social media platforms have accepted the payments without making the necessary checks. This is no more acceptable. We must prevent social media uh, could be used to influence the sentiment of population on specific topics. And the EU or the European Commission, can, can they do this? Can they enforce this? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, and, and what is uh, the most, where is this misinformation coming from that we're seeing on social media that we read out before? I can tell you that coronavirus represents a great opportunity for national state actors that time at carrying out misinformation to destabilize the political scenarios in foreign countries. Most of the campaigns are orchestrated by specific units that work uh, to spread propaganda and uh, misinformation. Uh, basically, Russia and China are the most active countries in this sense. And uh, Pierluigi, what worries you the most about how vulnerable are our iPads are, our phones are, when it comes to the information we're, we're getting uh, with regards to COVID-19? I believe that we have completely exposed to misinformation campaigns. Every time we receive a message or read any kind of information online, we need to double check them by verifying the news from trusted sources. I believe that we need to sustain awareness campaigns to explain the population the risk of misinformation, and we have to explain them how to actors operate and how to neutralize these campaigns. This is essential in my point of view. Pierluigi Paganini, thank you so much for coming on the program. Really appreciate your analysis.